Ahoy there! Hello everybody, welcome back to The Way of the Heron. It has been a hot minute since I made a video, um, but I did say in the last one that it might be a few months before I got around to this, so uh, I'm a man of my word. Um, this is going to be the tutorial and breakdown for the kata that was in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that, just just scurry on over there real quick, like, like a little mouse, watch it up, and then get back over here to devour this video up instead. I'll put it uh, in one of these places, you know, do the YouTube thing. Um, so I'm just going to break down the move, teach it move for move, talk about each move, what it is, and then in a follow-up video, probably a few months from now, uh, I'll do the Bunkai where I'll have somebody throw the attacks or the defenses and we'll show you like what these moves actually look like when they're put into practical use. Um, yeah, so let's not stand on ceremony. Uh, let's jump, oh look, threefold talk. I went to Malkiri Khan, it was super fun. I'll make a wee short video for the, uh, the Instagram or something about it. But uh, yeah, shout out threefold talk. Shout out Malkiri Khan. Shout out everybody who was at that thing. It was f tremendous, phenomenal. Anyway, okay, let's get with the kata. Ah! Right, so um, the first move of the kata is very traditional. I think you can tell I come from a karate background. It's gonna be a bow. So um, generally, I don't have belt hoops, unfortunately. So imagine this is just on a belt hoop. Um, starting with your back straight your shoulders up, your head looking straight ahead, your feet kind of, I don't know if you can see them, daffy ducking a bit, <sighs> let's pull down the leg thing, whatever, um, your feet daffy ducking a bit, uh, and your other hand on your side, uh, your sword is to be just kind of resting at your hip level with your hand on this point of it, and then you're going to Look towards the, I would say, the judges or the front of the hall, but I mean, it's not, it, you're not in the competition, so uh, just look ahead, and then you're just going to bow, like this. And when you bow in, at least karate, you don't take your eyes off the judge or the opponent. You, uh, you don't trust them, so you, you keep looking at them when you bow, as opposed to like a fantasy bow, which would be like, very flourished and stuff. No, you're not doing that because this person is trying to fight you, so you're not going to take your eyes off them. You bow like that. So, that's your first move. Um, once you do your bow, you take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, big long exhale, breathing is very important in a kata, and there'll, there'll be a few breathing points in this where the moves are just taking your breath. My God, this sun is bright. Um, as you breathe out, you're going to move your hand like this in an arc over onto the hilt of the sword. So our first three moves, we bow, we take a breath in, and then as we exhale, onto the hilt of the sword. Then our first strike is going to be stepping out on our right leg like this, one, and as we're landing into a zenkutsudachi, so a karate front stance, um, looks like this. So you've got your feet about shoulder width apart, your front foot is out in front of you, and your back foot is, again, kind of a little back and kicked 45 degrees out that way. And as we do that, we're going to do this move here. The moon rises over the lakes, straight through into a downward cut. So I'm going to lose the scabbard because it would be sitting on my hip at this point. So imagine it's still there. Um, so first move, uh, first combat move of the kata is you've done this, then you're stepping out. You bend your knees a little bit if you need to get the forward momentum here. You bend your knees, stepping out, trying to keep your head level all the time when you're doing a kata. You step out and as, as your foot comes out, so does the blade and then whips around behind you and down into a cut. And the, the, the cut is bringing you down into this position here, which is the falcon stoops. So just so you can see it, it's the sword angled down that way. You look kind of like a mountain with a slope coming up this way and a slope going down that way. I developed my own sword form. The people on the Discord know this, but uh, it's called the hen underfoot uh, because they have a hen. This is Musashi. And every time I train, uh, she just manages to be like right here. So every time I'm training, I'm always practicing the hen underfoot. Uh, right, but just to show you that one from another angle. Um, 
so we're starting, we're starting, we're going bow, bowing from the waist. Uh, you should really bow like this, I suppose, from the waist. And then hand across and then stepping out. So those two cuts, this first one, the moon rises over the lakes, drawing out for your opponent's throat, chest, or face, maybe the bridge of their nose. Um, and this is the strike. And then after that, it's just a transition point. So that's your cut. And then when you get to this point, you just let it continue along that same motion it was traveling until it's behind your head. And then you're using this hand to draw it down into a cut in front of you. So just like that. And we're ending up in this position here, the falcon stoops, um, which is kind of like a mountain. I think I said that, but it's, um, you've got, got an angle here and an angle here. And this is the falcon stoops. It's one of the guiding positions we have in Way of the Heron. Uh, anyway, so you're in this position. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move in this direction. So in any kata, in karate at least, uh, when you turn, you don't turn like this. You turn, you look first. So you turn your head to look where you're going. And then this turn is quite simple. You're just going to go onto the balls of your feet and pivot like that. The absolute quickest way you can do this turn, which also leaves us back into this lovely position here, um, which is the eel amongst the lily pads. So from here, we're turning 90 degrees. So look, turn, and then we're going to do courtier taps its fan. So courtier taps its fan is this motion. It's a deflect. Um, but in this case, we're going to just exaggerate it a little and change it from one arc like this into two blocks. So we're going to very solidly block our head and we're going to very solidly block um, our lower sections. So we look, pivot, block, block. So again, it's just this motion, but we're exaggerating it. Block, block. And just to show you that all in one, it's one, two, three, and then full speed, one, like that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flick the sword back into the eel amongst the lily pads. So that's basically um, like a fool's guard. Uh, it's running down along almost the same angle as your leg. And then we're gonna step forward here into the arc of the moon. Um, now the arc of the moon is two strikes with a very quick change of direction. So we're going to go this way and then immediately come back this way and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is our leg and the blade are going to move as one forward like this into an uppercut. And then we're going to just turn our shoulders similar, very similar to the step we've already done where we pivoted on our toes. We're going to turn our shoulders and just move our back leg around to clear a path for us like this. So you're just, to show you that again, you're here. This back leg is just moving across. So it's going to be on to the, to the right of your front foot. And this is your left leg moving. One, pivot your shoulders. And then we're going to step back on this leg. So it's moving like almost a rook in chess. It's going bop, bop, a knight even. Sorry, I just gonna say rook. I know that's the right name for it. Someone correct me in the comments. And then we're gonna step back into this strike again. So from here, like this. Okay, so just to show you that all in one go, from here we're going look, court here, eel amongst the lily pads, arc of the moon. So the idea here is that we're focused, we've killed that first person with our two strikes, um, we've gone one, two, we hear somebody coming in this direction, but we also hear somebody coming in this direction, so we turn to face this person, block their attack, strike at them and then as this person reaches us the first thing we do is we take our body out of the way because that's their target so in doing arc of the moon we remove our body from their targeting zone and then as they step in for their attack we're striking at them this way um so it looks like this one strike move strike so you'll notice that uh, um i'm, I'm going to be teaching these in kind of the karate the the Aido kind of Kenjutsu style of like very Japanese way of cuts and stuff. But if you were doing this in like a Hima style, this cut would definitely be like much more of a reachy kind of thing. So it'd be like one like this, you know, much more Hima. But we're just teaching it in the, uh, the way I would have learned it, which is like the karate style. So one, two, three. Okay, so next move. Um, maybe we didn't kill that guy. 
Maybe he managed to jump back, or maybe he had a friend right behind him. So the next move is going to be stepping out again on the left foot. The left foot is doing a lot of work in this little volley. Uh, we're going to be stepping forward. So we're bringing the sword like this, kind of chambering it up into uh, close to our navel. And then we're pouncing forward into a long stance on our left foot and flicking it out. Now this move can be either uh, contextually, it can be either the moon rises over the water or it can be um, the viper flicks its tongue. And the difference is the viper flicks its tongue is much more it's a fast kind of whipping motion like this, whereas the moon rises over the water is um, like a guard position. You're in long point. Uh, in this instance, it can be either. If you have a friend doing the same thing, then it's Viper flicks its tongue. If you are doing it on your own, call it moon rises over the water. So there's, in this kata, just it's a little confusing, there's moon on water, moon rises over the lakes, and moon rises over water. Thank Robert Jordan, not me. Um, so we're here in the Viper flicks its tongue, or the moon rises over water, uh, and we're just after stabbing the guy in the face. So that whole volley was all about distance management, where there's somebody coming here, you push them back and or kill them. Um, somebody coming here, you push them back and or kill them. And then as they jump back, you definitely kill them. So the next thing you need to do is pull your sword out of their face because that's what you've done. You've stabbed someone in the face. Never forget, this is all about violence. So, um, you're here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the sword back. And as you do that, we're pulling our left leg back in into a cat stance or a nikawakadachi. No joke. Um, so from here, this all happens as one. It looks like this. Okay? So, um, when you're in this stance, this is, like I said, the cat stance, 80, like 95% of your weight is on your back leg. And the idea is, uh, like, you know, if Johnny comes along and tries to sweep the leg, uh, he's not going to win because your leg is like loosey-goosey. So it'll go. And then it's your opportunity to crane kick, Miyagi-Do style, and win the fight. But no, so we're pulling back like this. Um, what this is, is basically a hikite. So if you've done karate, um, you know that uh, a hikite is this position. When you throw a punch, your hand comes back onto your hip, charged up for another hit. So it's basically the same where you're going, you know, it's like reloading, you're going So it's basically the same motion here, but with the sword. So you stabbed and you're, pulling it back so all the potential energy is here and you can strike, you can block, you can do whatever you want. Um, but it's just a quick retreat to transition into the next step. So from here we've gone and then we're going to look up the way because all katas kind of follow the shape of a capital H turned on its side. I'll put like a little drawing here. Um, so we're going to look up the way again turning our head before we turn our body just to see where we're going. And then we're going to kick our leg out, back falling into this Zenkutsudachi, the, the, the long front stance we were in forwards. Um, and we're going to move through, this is the swallow rides the air. Uh, it's like an ox guard or a hanging guard, you know? Uh, and as we do this, we're going to move through this position to block an incoming shot. Then we're going to count it with a diagonal chop, lift the hilt up and do the exact same thing again. So basically we're moving through a block into a strike and then just reversing that motion with the blade. So just to show you that slowly once, it's one, block, strike, block, strike, and then fast it looks like this. One, two. Okay, so it's like a double barrel. You're just cutting a person in four. Um, perfect. So, uh, I'll leave this one here, and then we'll shoot another one with the length of the kata for the next bit. So, get practicing this, and then I promise I'll get this next one out within the week. Uh, pinky promise. Okay, anyway, tai shower everybody. Uh, if you take a crack at it, be sure to, um, one, join our Discord, post it, show us your attempt at it, show us your mastery of it, I should say. Uh, 
And then two, again, uh, oh, look, I'm on the camera. Bing, 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 bing. Um, to jump on just for sword forms and discussion and stuff. It's been a little dead lately because I've been super busy with life, but um, I'm going to start doing some interesting stuff on the Discord now soon, so. Taisha, he said with a backwards sword.